What's happening everyone? Steve here, Cars with Steve, and today we are going to be diving into and figuring out how to use Sync 4 in the brand new 2021 Ford Mustang Mach-E. Before we dive right into it, I want to thank you guys as always for helping to support the channel. If you have any questions, make sure you drop them down below. Be sure to subscribe if you're finding value in the content because I've got all sorts of crazy giveaways planned. But let's dive right into it and figure out how to use Sync 4 in the 2021 Mustang Mach-E. Now this is the gigantic, beautiful, beautiful 15 plus inch display that's available inside of the Mach-E. So absolutely stunning. This display is going to come standard, but I love the way that this is laid out. Very, very straightforward. We've got our temperature settings along the bottom, lots of information and a lot of things to cover off inside of this next part of the review. So starting off at the very top. So as you can see there, this is going to be the hotkey for a number of different controls and settings. First thing we're going to be starting off with is a drive mode. And we've got three different drive modes to so either engage, whisper, or unbridled. And those are going to give us different things as we go between different drive modes. What that's going to do is it's going to tweak different settings inside of the vehicle, giving you a more powerful and a stiffer type of a drive in unbridled compared to the engage. As we start to move down, we've got a one pedal drive, which means that you really only have to worry about the gas pedal. As you take your foot off the pedal, the vehicle will automatically decelerate while simultaneously recharging the battery. Auto ambient light selection. If you're in a different mode, it's going to change the ambient light that's in the vehicle. Propulsion sound is really neat. So electric vehicles are whisper quiet. So a propulsion sound more or less is a faux sound that gives you a little bit of a feeling or that sound that you're actually driving a vehicle because when you're in an electric, you can't hear these things as they drive. Now, a couple other things to that, well, a lot of other things to look at. So we've got our basic camera buttons. So really, really nice is that this thing does have a full 360 camera. So as you can see there, we do have the ability to zoom into a specific spot. Really, really useful if you're getting in or out of a very tight space. From there at the very top, we've also got a front 180 degree view. We've got a front partial view. We've got the ability to turn off that beeping that we get as we back up. So if I throw this thing into reverse for a second, Watch what happens. So as you can see there, but when I back up, should start to get some beeping. There we go. So we've got the ability to turn that beeping off and you won't get that. So I do absolutely recommend keeping this thing on, keeping that on as well, because it is, it's a useful thing to have. As we start to move down, we've got park. Now the vehicle itself can help us out with park assist. Let's actually take a look and see how that system works. Using park assist is very straightforward. So we're just going to make sure that we press that P button there and the vehicle can help us out with parallel or perpendicular parking. So let's go parallel, a uh, perpendicular park for now. So we're just going to literally follow the directions on the screen. Okay, and we're just going to follow the directions. So what it wants us to do is it wants us to take our hands off the steering wheel. It wants us to shift into neutral. And then from there, all we have to do is hold this P button. So we're literally following the directions on the screen. So we're going to just press that P button there. It's literally taking over the steering wheel. It's doing everything for us here. And as you can see, there is a little countdown timer as we go as well, letting us know how long in between each step. Vehicle completely doing everything. I don't have my hands on the gas or the brake. Vehicle is literally pulling me into the spot, controlling the steering wheel, counting down. We should be good. And we are done. So as you saw, very, very straightforward. And then our parking aid there as well. The parking aid is going to be as we're in reverse. So as you can see there, so it lets us know what's coming up and what's close around the vehicle. So whether or not the parking aid shows up, really up to you. From there, we've got our simple access. So unlocking the charge cord and then our charge cord, our charge port light. So that's the light that was on the outside of the vehicle. 
as we move into driver assistance settings. So very straightforward. We've got some basic controls and then some more advanced settings. We'll get to the more advanced settings in just a moment, but we've got auto hold. With auto hold turned on, if you're stopped and you take your foot off the brake, it'll hold the vehicle in place. Traction control, we can turn that on or off as necessary. And the last one to point out on the control screen is our valet mode. Valet mode, what that's going to do is that's going to lock out the screen when we enter a four digit number. Now the number can change every time, but what's gonna happen is watch. We'll enter a four digit number and we'll say done. Confirm and done. And now watch what happens. It's now locked. You can't do anything on this SYNC 4 screen until you enter that four digit number again. Don't use 0000, use something a little bit more challenging if you're using that valet mode. Okay, next up, let's jump into our basic settings. So basic settings, we'll start off at the very top, which is our sound. So sound, we've got the ability to select our treble mid-range bass, we can reset, and we've also got the ability to select what's happening with the balance and fade. So you can select it for just the driver if you've got multiple people, you've got the ability to easily drag and drop where you'd ideally like the position. If you mess up, all you have to do is press reset, it'll bring it back to the system default. As we start to move down a little bit more, we've got speed compensated volume as well as a surround sound. So we can either go with the surround sound or a stereo sound. Now the speed compensated volume is an interesting one because as you're driving, the cabin's fairly quiet, but you've got the ability to select between different modes there, which is automatically going to change some different settings around based off of the vehicle speed as we move into our radio. So radio is actually an interesting one because we've got a number of different presets. So our preset pages. Now, if we go into our radio for a moment, let's let that launch. So as you can see, we've got our radio done and we've also got a series of different presets. But as you can see, we've got three individual rows. Now, if we jump back for a second into our settings, and into the radio, we've got the ability to select more rows. So I always recommend go to six, give it the most amount. And the reason why is I'll show you in just a sec. FM HD radio, you can turn that on or off. And then the radio text. So the text that shows up as we go into our radio. So this is going to be the radio text if the song is showing. And as you can see there, we've now got a series of different buttons there. So really, really beneficial if you're the type of person where you've got multiple presets, you've now got the capability to have up to 30 stored on this. And as you can see, it's a mix of AM, FM, Sirius XM so you can kind of do a little bit of a mix and match now along the top as you can see there we've got the ability to change between either AM FM or Sirius with a simple button press so really really cool let's jump back into settings there and our basic settings again so those are going to be this basics of the radio as we jump into our phone list so we can easily add a phone now one of the nice things about the 2021 mach e and sync 4 specifically is that we're now on wireless android auto and apple carplay in order to be able to add a phone all we're going to do is press the add phone button there and it's saying no device paired so we need to add a device search in. for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found okay so what we want to do is make sure on our phone there we're just going to make sure bluetooth is turned on and watch what happens there mustang mach e so all we're going to do is press that and watch what happens confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device so we just want to make sure that this number matches up to make sure we're pairing to the right vehicle. It's the case, so we're going to hit pair on my phone and we're going to hit yes on the screen. Okay, next up, it's now asking me, do I want to allow my contacts and favorites to sync? Absolutely, that's the idea behind hooking my phone up. So I'm just going to hit allow. For your safety, please stay alert to changing road conditions and use Sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Perfect. There we go. So nice and simple. My phone does support Apple CarPlay. So in order to be able to enable it, very straightforward. All we're going to do is make sure, so as you can see there, it's saying use CarPlay with Sync 4. Absolutely, we want to do that. So we want to turn on Wi-Fi and use CarPlay. Now, taking a look at the screen, so the other thing, the last step in order to be able to set up is 911 Assist. I always recommend turning that one on. And the big reason why is because if you're in an accident inside the vehicle with your phone connected, if the vehicle senses an accident, it's automatically going to dial 911 for you. So I always recommend make sure you turn that one on and you're just going to hit finish. And as you can see, I'm now connected. So my phone does support Apple CarPlay and very straightforward. So iPhone may collect some data. We need to enable CarPlay, obviously, in order to be able to use it. Boom, look at that. 
connected. So nice, so nice. And it looks so, so good on the screen. I love the look of it. But as you can see there, we've got maps. So we can run off of Google, we can run off of Apple Maps. So let's actually take a look and see what apps I've got installed here that we can actively use. As you can see there, I do have Apple Maps. I've got Google Maps, I've got Waze. So if you don't like using the built-in system, if you'd prefer to use the Waze app or any other apps, you've got the ability to easily select that. So I love it. I love the fact, and look at this, you can use it on this middle screen. And that's going to work the same. So whether you use Google Maps, Apple Maps, whatever the case may be, it's all going to be done on this beautiful screen. And as you can see, we've got a hot button for my phone, music, for my messages, now playing podcasts, audiobooks, my calendar, ton of different options. They're really, really nice. Now, one other thing to point out is Waze. So as I selected Waze, it does say that it wants to use Bluetooth on my phone. So just make sure you hit OK. And the Waze app will work perfectly there. I am now fully connected to my device using Apple CarPlay. Now, one other thing to point out about CarPlay is that if we look on the phone for a second there, so if you go into just your general settings and go into CarPlay, so taking a look there, we've got my car connected, and that's going to be for the Mach-E. We hit customize along the top, and now we've got the ability to add in or delete certain things. So really, really neat. You can kind of reorganize the way that these things look. So if you don't want certain apps to be there, like let's say if I didn't want Zoom to show up, so I can delete Zoom, and as you can see there, Zoom is now gone. So it's really that simple, same thing, all available apps will show, or we can reset it to whatever the factory default was, and we can also rearrange. So if you typically listen to podcasts as you're driving, all we have to do is drag and drop. Now watch what just happened. It's updated it, so podcasts are now on the home screen first. So really, really cool, you can easily do that directly through your cell phone and that's going to be fully connected. Now, as we can see, we can go through a number of different options there. There are certain settings and certain things that will work with my phone connected. So things like, let's hop in there. So we've got LiveX Live, if you've got Spotify, things like that, will work directly through this middle screen. Now, for whatever reason, some apps like radio apps, Pandora, things like that aren't working. All you have to do is just make sure you're updated to the latest version of your iOS. So in Apple world, your iOS, and you also wanna make sure you have the most recent update for the whatever radio app you'd like to play. In order to be able to disconnect the phone, it's also a very straightforward process. We're just gonna hit the settings button along the top. And as you can see, we've got whatever available devices there are. So we've gonna, we're gonna look at my phone. We can either disable Apple CarPlay. We can remove my phone completely. So if we get remove, all we're gonna do, remove phone, yes, okay. My phone is now disconnected. It's really that simple to be able to either add or remove a phone. In order to be able to set up Android Auto, it's a very similar process to what we just finished seeing for the Apple side of things. All we're gonna do is hit add phone. No device is paired, so we wanna add Search a device. Search your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. There we go, that's good. Now, all I wanna do is on my device, I'm just going to connect, there we go. And we've got the Mustang Mach-E that's shown up. So we're just gonna pair with that. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. And same thing, the pins do match up, so all we're gonna do is hit OK and yes. For your safety, please stay alert to changing road conditions and use Sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Okay, so very straightforward. My phone does support Android Auto, so we just need to make sure that we enable it there. And it's also gonna give me a few other things. So it's asking me to allow access to my contacts, which we'll do that in just a sec. But Android Auto would like to turn on Bluetooth and pair. So we're gonna hit next. Allow access to contacts. We're gonna hit allow. Okay. There we go, and I am connected. Now, a few things to point out. This one does, my phone, I should say, does not have an active SIM card in it, which is why the map's not showing up, but we are connected through Android Auto. So as you can see there, we can just press this home button along the bottom, and we've got access to our Android Auto instead. So we've got Waze, I've got Google Maps installed, we've got settings, weather, and a few other things. Now, obviously, because I don't have an active plan, that's why we don't have my messages and things like that showing up, because there literally are no messages here. But as you can see, we are connected and it really is that simple. So you can use the Waze app, you can use Google Maps. If you had other apps and things like that installed like Pandora, like LiveX Live, etc., you'd be able to use them directly through this middle screen. Now, as I mentioned in the Apple CarPlay side of things, if for whatever reason, certain apps aren't showing up, all you're gonna wanna do is just make sure that you go into your phone, go to and make sure that you're, you have the latest version of your, IO, of your operating system installed. And more importantly, you've got the most up-to-date version 
version of the app installed because some apps may not necessarily work until they're updated and from there as you can see there very straightforward in order to get into some basics we can click on ways there we can look at notifications or use our google assistant now in order to be able to completely remove this thing from the vehicle all we're going to do is we're going to hit the button along the top and as you can see we've got my s9 plus and we can disable it if we'd like to or we can look at basic settings and we can just remove the phone so we're just going to hit remove phone there and like what we just saw with the apple side of things it is just that simple for a plug and play solution and we are now disconnected now as we start to move down next up is going to be for charge so it gives us active charge status so whatever our current battery is and it gives us a rough idea of how many kilometers or miles we have left now one thing to note this one i'm literally sitting here so the range actually would be longer especially as you start driving but because i'm parked it's essentially like i'm parked in a regular gas powered vehicle when you're parked in a gas powered vehicle you are going to use up a ton more gas it's the same way with this one we're not regeneratively braking we're not driving Driving. So the reason why this thing is showing as a smaller kilometer or distance is simply because I'm not moving and I've got a few other things going inside of this thing as well. But taking a look, so we've got the ability to charge scheduling and our depart and comfort and comfort, which is actually going to be one of the more important parts. So this is a really, really useful thing, especially if you tend to leave your house at the same time of the day or you leave work the same time of the day. So we can enter in different times. Now the benefit there is that what will happen is the vehicle will automatically turn on well I should turn on I should say essentially condition the cabin so we can either go cool or we can go hot whatever the case may be just depending on what our preferences are so obviously in the winter time we want to make sure that we're on hot or warm at, during the winter because what will happen is before your time starts the vehicle will automatically turn on the cabin temperature and it'll start warming up and prepping the cabin for you for when you hop inside so very very straightforward and I love the fact that this thing is available Oh, uh, go back to settings there so those are going to be the basics for the charge next up personal profiles so as i mentioned we do have three individual settings for drivers but we do have the capability to set up an individual profile now that's really beneficial because we can link it directly to our phone or to the key fob so beneficial there and the reason why is because if it recognizes you as the driver it'll automatically change your presets it'll change the it'll change the seat setup it'll change the side view mirrors every little setting will be based off of your individual profile looking at driver assistance settings even more in depth so basic for the driver assistance we've got three different types of cruise control first one is our normal so just your regular go cruise control if you're if you've got it on normal and you're cruising and you break you're going to have to reset the cruise control versus the adaptive the adaptive cruise control is essentially a set it and forget it cruise control so let's say if you're driving on the highway going 120 kilometers an hour not miles per hour 120 kilometers an hour if the vehicle in front of you slows down yours will automatically break if they speed up or you get out of the way change lanes whatever the case may be it'll pick you right back up to your set speed the intelligent cruise essentially takes that to the next level because the intelligent cruise what that'll do is not only is it a set it and forget it cruise control but let's say if you've got it set for a tolerance level of oh i don't know five kilometers let's say and the speed sign says 80 kilometers but then it drops down to 60 with the intelligent cruise control activated if it drops you down to 60 the system essentially automatically adjusts your speed on the fly so it's a really really great system there next up our speed limit assist so you can get a speed warning if you want to based off of same thing a certain tolerance level so if you're speeding 5 10 20 kilometers an hour over whatever the case may be you'll get a little chime letting you know you should probably slow down Next up, we've got our lane keeping system. Same thing, works three different ways. The alert, if you start to veer over into a leather lane without signaling, the steering wheel will shake. It's almost as if you're running over rumble pavement. The aid is going to actually pull you back into your lane. The steering wheel will take over in order to recenter you in your lane, and the alert and the aid will do both. So it'll give you a little bit of a steering wheel shake, and it'll recenter you and pull you back into your lane. From there, we've got the intensity, and that's going to be the intensity of the steering wheel shake. So as I mentioned, it's got a feeling almost as if you're going over a rumble pavement, and it gets a little bit more intense depending on the intensity there. Let's go back up and close off that lane keeping system. Next one is the pre collision assist. So, really, really smart technology. If the vehicle senses a potential collision with active emergency braking, it's automatically going to brake for you. If for whatever reason it can't brake or it needs to get you out of the way, evasive steering will literally take over the steering wheel. The car will take over and it'll pull you out of the way. So, really, really beneficial there. You do have the ability to turn those ones off if you'd like to. And then, how sensitive is it also? 
as we start to move down, we've got our rear camera delay, our blind spot system. So blind spot system lets you know if anybody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. So really, really cool. Let's actually take a peek at that for a second there because it works the same for all Ford vehicles. But as we turn that on, so as you can see there, that little orange button that's flashing, what that's going to do is that's going to highlight orange like that whenever somebody's entered the blind spot on either side. So really, really cool. As we start to move down, we've got our cross traffic alert. So what's going to happen is if a vehicle is coming perpendicular from you, whether you see it or not with that setting turned on, it's automatically going to let you know of a potential collision. Reverse brake assist, if we're backing up, what'll happen is if we get too close to an obstacle, or even let's say if somebody jumps in front of the, and behind the vehicle as you're backing up, the vehicle will automatically brake for you. So if it senses an obstacle behind you, the vehicle will brake. The driver alert, what'll happen is if you get too many alerts because we're veering over into lane without signaling, they'll tell you you should probably take a break. The auto hold setting with that one turned on, if you're braked, if you're at a complete stop and you take your foot off the brake, the vehicle will stay in place. And then last one is going to be our traction control. We can easily turn that one on or off. Next up, we've got some basic vehicle settings. So vehicle power down timer in all Ford vehicles. So gas powered vehicles, this one typically is available with a 30 minute countdown. It's the same way with the electric side of things. So if the vehicle remains idle for 30 minutes, it'll automatically turn off. From there, a rear occupant alert. Really, really cool. Watch what happens when I turn off the power to the vehicle. Look at this. Look at this. How cool is that? Now, one of the benefits of that, check rear seats. If you've got kids, unfortunately it does happen, but Ford has really thought forward on that one. And what it's done is they've given you that option now where you can have this system. You can turn it on if you want to. It's just that rear occupant alert, but it lets you know to gives you a simple reminder to check your backseat to make sure there's nobody there. Next up is going to be our easy entry exit. So as we unlock the vehicle, hop in, seat adjustment will automatically bring the seat back so you can easily get inside of it. My key gives you the ability to set up certain limitations for a key fob. Now, one thing to note, you do only get one key fob with the Mach-E because you do have the capabilities with Ford Pass Connect to use your phone as a key instead. So really, really neat, really straightforward there. But my key allows you to do certain limitations. The limitations could be something like maybe the radio doesn't turn on until the seatbelt's plugged in, or maybe you can only go up to 100 kilometers an hour. So you can set certain limitations for a key fob. So really, really neat. We've got our onboard serial number, our alarm set up. So our alarm, we can always ask on exit. And we've got our motion sensors on the outside of the vehicle, which would trigger an audible alarm. From there, we've got remote start. So as I mentioned, you don't have the ability to remote start through your cell phone. It's going to be or through your key fob, I should say. It's strictly through your cell phone. We can turn remote start off completely, so we can't remote start whatsoever. Our climate control, is it going to be last settings or are we gonna let the vehicle determine what the cabin temperature should be? And what's the duration? Is it going to be 15 minutes, five minutes, or 10 minutes? Other one to point out is our steering wheel. So if our heated seats were on or if our heated steering wheel is on, do we want the vehicle to automatically determine if those should or should not come on with a remote start? Next up are gonna be our windows. So one of the cool things about the Mach-E is that we've got the ability to use our key fob in order to roll the windows down or raise them back up. Let's hop outside the vehicle to figure out how that works. In order to be able to roll the windows down using the key fob, all we're going to do is we're just going to press the unlock button twice. On the second button press, we're going to hold. So one, two, and hold. So power windows down, and then in order to roll them back up, we're just going to press that lock button twice, and same thing. On the second button press, we're going to hold. And it's really that simple. So really, really straightforward process. Love the fact that the Mustang Mach-E does that as well. From there, we've got our wipers. So the courtesy wipe, what that one does is if you've got the windshield wipers going and the courtesy wipe, it'll take a few seconds, but a few seconds later, it'll do one more wipe just to clear off any more potential windshield wiper fluid that might be there. Rain sensing wipers, keep those ones turned on because it's automatically going to adjust the windshield wipers depending on how much rain is hitting the windshield. Now, one of the benefits is that on that right stick, you've also got the ability to select how sensitive it is to rain hitting the windshield. From there, we've got a reverse wiper. So with this setting turned on, if your wipers in the front are going and you back up, it'll automatically flip on that rear wiper for us as well. So keep that one turned on. It is a useful feature. 
Oh, ooh, and let's close that. Next up, we've got our power lift gate. So it's automatic, it's hands-free. We can change it to a manual instead, so we have to manually lift it up. Don't do that, leave it automatic, and hands-free gives us that foot-activated capability. From there, we've got lighting, so auto high beam. What will happen is the vehicle will automatically turn on the high beams for us if it's too dark outside. And then if the vehicle senses another person or senses an oncoming vehicle, it'll automatically dim the high beams before turning them off. From there, we've got our auto lamp delay, which when our vehicle's locked, do the lights stay on for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 120 seconds, or do they just automatically turn off? Really a matter of preference there. And we've got our locks. So locks, we've got a ton of different options. So some of the options are the auto unlock, miss lock chirp, if for whatever reason the vehicle doesn't lock, it'll let you know with chirping. Walk away, if you're walking away with the key fob in your pocket, it'll automatically lock, which is really cool. Switch inhibitor means that you don't have the ability to unlock the vehicle doors from inside. And our audible feedback. So a lot of these things really straightforward, but I do recommend keeping them all on as a default. They're there for a reason. Remote unlock, when we unlock it, do all doors get unlocked? Or is it just the driver's door that gets unlocked? Let's close that tab up. From there, we've got our mirrors, so our auto, fold, or our auto fold. So when we lock the vehicle, the mirrors will automatically fold in for us. And we've got our door keypad code. So really, really nice. So we do have a five digit factory number that we can use in order to get inside of the vehicle if we forget our key fob or if we don't have our key fob on us. Let's actually hop outside for a second. I wanna show you that. So as you can see there, taking a peek, we've got our numbers there. So that is the five digit fact. There is a five digit factory number that we can use as a default and we can set up more numbers if we'd like to. From there, we've got our tire mobility kit, which is good for four years. So I do recommend keeping it as a default and what'll happen at that four year mark, we'll get a reminder that we should replace it. And we've also got our slow, our, our brake coach. So the brake coach really, really beneficial because this thing is an electric vehicle. So with the brake coach, what that'll do is as we're driving, it'll coach us on how to brake effectively to make sure that we're recharging the battery as we go. And with low battery, do we get a warning at 30 kilometers, 50 or 80? And from there, our EV driving history, we can reset, which I don't have any history as of yet. And same thing with the tow, don't have to worry about that. And from there, last one is going to be our speedometer. So we can change between either miles per hour or keep it in kilometers. Now, one thing to note is that it will always show kilometers as a default. Let's hop over here, you gotta take a peek. All right, now if we go speedometer there, as you can see, we now have our miles per hour showing as well as our kilometers per hour. And that's gonna be the basics of those vehicle settings. From there, we've got our general. So some general settings, we can change between English, Spanish, or French, Celsius or Fahrenheit, kilometers per hundred, or we can switch to miles per, actually, I'm curious about that. Miles, ah, miles per kilowatt hour. I was wondering, cause it's like miles per gallon, which does not make sense, obviously. <laughs> All right, from there, we've got our intelligent suggestions, which touch screen, oh, touch screen beep. Okay, this one. That beeping that we're getting, if you don't like that beep, we've got the ability to turn it off easily about sync. And then we've also got our reset. So we can either reset just forward pass connect, or we can do a master reset to reset our, our, our vehicle to its factory defaults. So that's really, really beneficial if the screen is giving you any issues, if your cell phone's giving you issues, whatever the case may be, just perform a master reset and it'll bring it back to our factory defaults. Next up is our display. So this display I think is absolutely beautiful, but it, it's a lot. There's a lot of information there. So what we can do is we can press calming screen, which will bring us to a nice calming screen instead. Push a button to turn it back on and let's go back into our settings again. And our display so we can go calming screen. We can change the brightness of the screen as well. If we like it a little bit brighter, a little bit darker, or if we go one way, we can just reset it to factory default custom mode. So the instrument cluster is this little guy again. Let's take another peek. So that is our instrument cluster. So it's going all kind of crazy right now. And that's just because I'm shooting in 24 frames per second, not 60. But taking a look there, we've got our auto versus light and dark mode. So this is the light mode. So really, really nice look there versus the dark mode and versus the auto. So what will happen there is if you're in the auto mode, it's automatically going to flip you between that daytime or the nighttime mode, or you can select one or the other. So really a matter of preference and same thing, this center stack mode, whether it's an auto light or dark, again, matter of preference. I personally, I kind of love this dark mode. It looks really, really sharp. So I would personally always leave it into the dark mode, but you can have it so that it's constantly light, or you can let the vehicle determine if it should 
should be the daytime or the nighttime mode instead. Moving next, we've got our clock settings. So we've got the ability to easily change it. It's a very straightforward there. We can move between either AM or PM as necessary. We can change to a 24 hour time if we'd like, and we can also do an auto time zone update. So what the auto time update will do, if the vehicle senses that we're in a different time zone, whatever the case may be, it'll automatically change the time for us. Connectivity. Tons of things. So this thing obviously does have a built-in modem, which means you can use it as a wireless hotspot. Now, one thing to note is that you do need to make sure that you've got a, a, a plan through your cell phone provider, a data-only plan in order to be able to use this thing as a wireless hotspot. But it's really neat. You've got the capabilities to do that. Now, one thing you want to at least make sure that you do is turn on Wi-Fi at home. And the big reason why is because you want to make sure that you've also got your system updates turned on as well to be automatic. Because what will happen is with it connected to Wi-Fi at home, your system updates will automatically be done. So your vehicle will always be up to date. If they end up releasing any sort of software update, the vehicle will automatically download it. So I absolutely recommend to make sure you have these two things on in tandem. And as I mentioned, you've got the vehicle hotspot there. You can turn that on or off very, very easily by pressing one button or the other. It gives you the data usage there as well. Now, there are certain apps that will work directly through this middle screen. This just gives you the ability to select between different things. So my app isn't listed. Compatible apps, which is kind of neat. So it lets you know what's currently available as a compatible app for this middle screen. Next up, going back to, so we've already seen this departure, but we saw it different a second ago because we edit. And this is what we're looking at for the departure. Let's cancel out of that. Next one is our 911 assist. So as I mentioned, always make sure that you've got that 911 assist turned on. And more importantly, make sure that your phone is connected when you turn the 911 assist on. All right, because again, big thing why, and the big reason why you want this on is because if the vehicle senses a collision, it'll automatically dial 911 for you. From there, we've got our voice control settings. So ton of different options there. Voice command help. So we can listen for a wake word, which I actually did not know Sync 4 could do this until a second ago, but we can select between different wake words. So voice control, advanced mode is off. I want you to listen for a second. Okay, Ford. 94.9. Tuning to FM 94.9. Okay. So it said that it's changed stations. Let's just go back to the home screen for a second. So it has, it has changed stations, but it gave us a little bit of a warning message before it did it. Now that's one of the things that's actually the benefit of having that advanced mode on is because we won't get as many notifications. Phone confirmation, do you wanna call such and such person? Yes or no. And then our voice command list. So when we say that keyword to bring up the voice command list or press the hot key on our steering wheel, what'll happen is this will come up. So this essentially is going to be the list, whether or not that one shows up, you can toggle it on or off by pressing that button. Last up is our ambient light. So we've got the ability to select what hap what's happening with our ambient light. So we can change it out. If we have a color preference that we like, we've got the ability to easily select it. So it does show up in various parts of the vehicle. And that's going to be the basics of our control by pressing on this icon there. So as you can see there, ton of different options. We can control our drive modes, driver assistance settings, go into more advanced details of the vehicle as well, and then just bring it back to home by pressing that. Now there isn't technically a default home screen that you're gonna see every time the vehicle's on or off. It's going to be based off of what was up here last. But if you have a preference of having the map there instead, you've got the capabilities to do that. You can expand it out to cover off those hotkeys along the bottom as well. If you have a preference of what shown there so you can kind of extend it out so really really cool now this is the built-in factory navigation so it's very straightforward to use very very simple in order to use factory navigation what we're going to do is starting off all we're going to do is type in an address so let's say if we want to go to something specific so we're going to say 570 okay so we're going to kind of start to type and it's automatically going to autofill and autocomplete for us so we can start typing and it's automatically going to find an address for us. We're just going to select. And as you can see there, so no traffic or alerts, which is great. We're just going to hit go. Obey traffic laws. Be alert and use voice commands while driving. Okay. Please drive to highlighted route. So as you can see, there are routes highlighted. But one of the nice things about this Mach-E is that not only is it highlighted there, but look at the screen now. So now we do have a little, not quite a heads up display, but a little bit of a heads up display, letting us know where to go as we're driving. So really, really neat that we don't necessarily have to look at this middle screen as we drive. We've got the capability to simply glance down in order to see what's going on. And as you can see there, we do have our 
our route set up there and we've got how long it's going to take what it's anticipated for us to get there and we can just cancel out the route by pressing that x button along the top now there are quite a few settings that are available for this for the maps and the navigation let's hop through that and let's look at that for a second so we can see what's up ahead exit services and a number of other things we can look for parking so parking not found within 0.6 kilometers of a vehicle, which mean it simply means that this thing is not completely up to date as of yet, but more of that is coming soon. We can look at weather, where am I, and then basic settings. So well, I say I say basic settings, but this is by no stretch basic. Like look at all of the advanced things that we can do here. Starting off, we've got our map and vehicle. We can view in 3D. We can look at different map layers really really cool so we've got our traffic our trip log we can look at now this is one of the nice things about the mach -E. we've got a series of different installed maps as well so different views we can install different maps in there also different views are auto zoom during guidance which as we start to come close to a turn it'll automatically blow up the map and let us know where we should be turning do we want to go on the fastest shortest or the most eco-friendly route and we want to automatically add EV stations to our route. So really, really beneficial if you're new to the EV world to know kind of how much time you've got before you should be charging yourself up. Avoidance, do we want to avoid U-turns, highways, toll roads, ferries, car trains, so many different things. Now, one of the benefits of that is that we've got the capability to essentially set up a route for things that we don't like. So if you don't like driving on highways, don't like toll roads, we can select that and it'll dynamically create a map based off of whatever things we want to avoid. All right, now from here, we've got a GPS simulator. We can search by relevance, coordinates. We've got some different things for traffic. So traffic and traffic alert. If we've got those set up and there's traffic on the highway, on the road, whatever the case may be, it'll let us know about traffic and then it'll automatically optimize the route for us to give us the quickest route, which essentially replaces the Waze app. Now, obviously, Waze is a little bit, a little bit user, well, fairly user friendly. There's a little bit more of a social element there, but it is nice to know that it'll automatically give us the fastest available route if we've got that selected notifications if there's if there's red light cameras speed cameras things like that it will let us know about those upcoming if we get close to a border crossing we'll get a notification if we're going through school zones if we want to find different ev stations find parking if there's a, now these are interesting ones like curve ahead does that really matter i don't think so is there a hill ahead unless it's going to be a crazy big hill and you don't have battery juice that one could be handy and then same thing lateral wind is an interesting one and then the road narrowing so interesting alerts there as we start to move down destination suggestions based off of our previous data we can look at some basic system information and then we can restore back to our factory default now one other thing to point out is let's say if we're looking at a different location we can look at our browsed or we can browse, I should say, for different things. So if we want to find a restaurant, if we want to find parking at different attractions, things like that, we can look at different categories. We can look at some recently found places. We can look at some save locations as well. So really, really straightforward, really, really cool there. Now, one thing to note, let's actually look at recent. So we've got one recent. If we select that, same thing. So we can easily go to it, X out in order to be able to cancel out. And then we've got our saved, and that's going to be the basics there. Now, one thing to point out, if we go back to the basic search menu, so if we press search up at the top there, as you can see, we've got a series of different options available there. So if we've got our home address set up, we can literally just say that hotkey to turn on our voice command. We can press the voice command button on the steering wheel and say navigate home. It'll automatically save, bring us to our saved home address. We can find a close Ford dealership. We can look at some parking, charging stations. We've got different search tools as well. So we can go based off of intersections, coordinates, different trips, trends, and things like that. And we've also got the ability to easily add in shortcuts. So it's kind of neat, the types of things and what you can do with the navigation, but that's going to be the basics of using factory navigation inside of this thing. Now, as we start to move down the screen, as I mentioned, these are essentially going to be our most frequently or I should say our most recently used tabs. So we've got the ability to select different ones. As you can see there, as we press different things, it's going to bring us to different screens. So the one that I just finished pressing was our was for our trip. So we can look at the full trip, trip one, trip two, different options there. And then we can simply press in order to be able to reset back to that default again. And then you can also see what kind of driving scores we have. And that's very straightforward. Now, as I mentioned, these ones here are all going to be dynamic based off of what we're pressing. So as you can see there, we can now do a hot connect to a connect to either Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Neither of the cell phones are connected, so that's not going to make a difference here. If we had pressed the phone, things like that, so that's going to show up. And that, as I mentioned, it's going to bring up whatever is currently going on based off of our hot button. So it's kind of neat, the kind of basic setup in this thing. 
as we look up overhead, the last one to point out is this little six button, this little six dot button along the top. So this is going to be for individual profile. So profile, we can set that up for an individual person. We can look at phone pairing. We can set up Sirius XM, etc. Look at different options there. Basics. So looking at our radio, we've also got a hotkey for our phone. And these are essentially going to be a few different hotkeys that are available. One interesting one, you do have a digital owner's manual. So if there are any things, you're getting some weird lights on the dashboard, etc. We can easily jump into the owner's manual in order to see what's going on. From there, hotkey for Android Auto, Apple CarPlay as well, or we can connect to Bluetooth. Looking at previous trips. So as you can see there, kind of dynamically on the fly. Let's press one more for you to see and watch what happens there. Let's look at radio. So let's push this out of the way. But it also gives us a certain limitation. So we've got a maximum of three, oh, sorry, six individual screens that will be saved there. And we can just kind of flip up if we want to. We can press up to select it. So lots of different flexibilities there. Pressing that hotkey again, very straightforward there. And we can just swipe up in order to bring it back. Now, as we start to move down, this one does have fully digital climate control. So we've got the ability we can drag up and down in order to be able to affect what's going on there. We can manually press up and down to go one at a time if you want to go that route. We can drop this down. From there, we've got auto lets the vehicle determine what the cabin temperature should be. Other side is going to be what's actually going on with this. So as you can see, we can turn the system off completely. We can go automatic. So our air conditioner, we can go max AC, air circulation button, our e-heat. We can do that as well. We've also got the ability to make it blow to our windshield, to our face or to our feet. And it kind of updates it dynamically, letting you know kind of where the wind is going and the fan is blowing as you go. So it's pretty neat. Now this thing does have dual zone climate control. So if the driver or passenger like it a little bit warmer, a little bit colder, etc., you've got the capability to easily select and change that out. Now, one thing to note is you can see, we do have a different setting for the driver versus the passenger. So if we just press that dual button, it's going to default it back to whatever the driver setting is. As we start to move down, we've got our heated seats. So the driver and passenger front row seats, we can turn on our heated steering wheel if we want. We had our heated seats going, three individual settings there or off. And we've also got our fan speed. So we can control how fast the fan's blowing. And as I mentioned, press this in order to be able to turn that fan on or off hot key press in order to get rid of it. From there, we've got our max windshield defroster, our rear window defroster, and then lastly is going to be our audio button. So we've got our audio dial, I should say, so we can crank this. So nice. So nice. So easily we can up, we can change that around. It's a really, really nice sound to this thing. I love this Bang & Olufsen sound system. And we've got the ability to just in the middle, we can press that button in order to be able to turn the audio on or off. But that is going to be the basics of this Sync 4 system inside of the Mach-E. Well, folks, that was a look at how to use Sync 4. It's a fairly complicated system, but super user-friendly and intuitive all at the same time. If you enjoyed the content, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And until I see you next time, make sure you stay safe.